this evening. Um, as we mentioned before, this webinar will be recorded. If you use the chat window, type your questions, we'll address at the end of the presentations. But this is the fourth presentation in the Diamonds in the Rough webinar series facilitated, facilitated by the Cap Alvisai Guy Wright Education Technology Committee. The webinar will be in two parts. First, be an overview by Cecilia Pitts, National Society of Black Engineers Membership Coordinator. Cecilia served as a membership coordinator of the National Society of Black Engineers World Headquarters Membership Team in Alexandria, Virginia since 2012. In this position, she helps develop membership materials, strategies, and initiatives for recruitment and retention, as well as to help develop and charter new chapters. Her focus is customer service and membership fulfillment. The second part being overviewed by Marlon Ridley. Mr. Ridley's professional background includes experimental physics, biomedical research and design, engineering management. Mr. Ridley holds a BS in electrical engineering and a master's in physics, both from the University of Memphis. Mr. Ridley joined Cap Offside Fraternity in 2011. He's currently the Alexandria Fairfax, Virginia Capital League Chair and charter the Alexandria Fairfax, Virginia Nesby Jr. Chapter. Mr. Brilli has been a member and supporter of the Nesby Mission since 1999. And with that, I will turn it over to Cecilia. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Let's talk about the National Society of Black Engineers first. Um, the National Society of Black Engineers was founded out of a need um, on the campus of Purdue University um, by tenacious college students who saw that the faces of engineering did not look like them. And so they decided we're going to change the face of engineering and we're going to come up with our own organization to increase the number of black engineers, not only on their campus, but in the world. And now there's a new need that has arisen um, to change that face again. So this is not something that's going to be here for just a year or two, but this is going to be something that changes the face of the STEM um, world forever. Okay, you can go to the next screen. Okay. All right. Okay. right. Yes, I can. Uh huh. Um, Okay, there we go. <clears throat> um, and Nesby Jr. is one of the largest student-governed organizations based in the United States. That means that we are ran by student leaders. We are ran by collegiate. You have to be a collegiate um, a college student to be on our national board. And World Headquarters, which is where I work, we um, work as a support team to that. And Nesby's mission is to increase the number of culturally responsible black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, professionally, and positively impact the community. The current challenges in STEM um, is that there's only 18% of black fourth graders and 14% of black eighth graders in the U.S. were proficient in math in 2013. Um, according to the NA, the National Assessment of Educational Progress. And um, I would read all this information to you, but that would make our, pro, our um, presentation a lot longer than it is. To sum it all up, what we're saying is we need to increase our footprint in the face of not only black students, but women and minorities. And Nesby Jr. is our answer to that need. The t our society has definitely have an ambitious goal to produce 10,000 African American um, bachelor group degree recipients by 2025 and so we always say 10k by 2025 and that is a goal that we can achieve and how we achieve that goal is partnering with different organizations such as the mighty men of Kappa Alpha Psi to um, get our message out there and, and also build chapters in the areas that we may not be able to reach. And we love partnering with positive um, positive organizations. And um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, 
okay? And why is the pre-college initiative important? It's because it, the, it, the pre-college initiative is designed to make STEM fun. And the first goal in a lot of things is not only for the students to learn, but there have been studies proven that if kids are having fun while learning, they absorb more. So we, our goal is to introduce the engineering and, and helps if, um, by having activities for students to discover how fun science and engineering technology and math can be and not make it so scary. You know, is math hard? I always have a motto. Is science hard? Yes. Is math hard? Yes. Is engineering hard? Yes. But it doesn't mean that we can't do it. It just means that it's hard. And because something is hard doesn't mean that you should shy away from it. If anything, you should run right into it because this could be something that you love. And this also has a lot of benefits that are around it. And the way that our Nesby Junior chapters are set up is that we offer um, different curriculums such as our competitions, but you as an organization are able to speak directly to the needs of that community. So for example, if your community is having issues with their SATs and their PSATs, we have um, things that can help you increase your scores. If your um, community is having issues where kids don't have anywhere to go after school and they don't have activities that are geared towards the STEM fields, we can provide you with activities that will engage and stimulate their minds. And also, um, you can build on how to um, apply for college, how to build your resume, how to plan for um, testing for the PSATs and then all of this if all of this they get for just five dollars um, as their membership fee yearly and also to be able to come and have a whole section that's devoted to them during our FRCs which are our fall regional conferences and our national conventions where they get to um, showcase what they've learned all year and um, I know as a child, when I went to national conventions with my parents and they, they drug me there, um, the smaller, the smallest part of it was the kids part. But with NSBE, we make it that it's not, if it's not equal, sometimes it's bigger. This has been the biggest um, conference convention that we had where we had over 2,400 kids at one point in a one space and they were all doing STEM activities and engaging themselves in STEM activities. So that is something amazing and wonderful to see. All right, to so see, I'm um, going to uh, pull up the PowerPoint now. Yes, okay. And I'll start with the, um, I'll start, I'll start uh, with this PowerPoint, you know, and you can chime in as we go through the slides. Uh, okay, wonderful. To give us details on the uh, NSB part. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Marlon Ridley. I'm the Advocate Manager of Fairfax NSB Junior Advisor. Um, I've been involved with NSB since 1999 as an undergraduate at the University of Memphis. One of the things I've, I've always done, I've always been an advisor to high school students. Uh, I've had several Nesby Junior chapters in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, several of them have been involved with uh, some of the programs we'll talk about later, and and um, and get and traveling to the fall regional conferences and our national conventions. So a lot of things that Cecilia uh, just spoke about, I'll echo again during this presentation. Uh, Cap Alpha Psi National Guide Right STEM mission is to engage students in science and engineering with hands-on activities that build exposure to STEM academic fields. The way we see this is everything can be hands-on. Uh, it's not a lecture. We want to utilize the NSBE platform and curriculum to engage students. Uh, uh, the NSBE junior chapters across the country can meet at libraries, schools, uh, uh, churches. Uh, it doesn't take much to kind of assemble a NSBE junior chapter or a group of students and to get them involved with STEM. 
And the best part about this is uh, we can increase exposure of STEM careers and local professionals through NASB and through the Capoffice Office Opportunity uh, Local Guide Right Challenge. Um, again, you know, the benefits with the National Guy Right STEM Partnership and NASB uh, is uh, working uh, working to uh, bring students together on STEM activities, whether it's a math uh, competition or robotics competition or a science fair. Um, we like to see the students to attend these NASB conferences. Again, I've been doing this since 1999, and the big, the big point about NASB conferences is that students rarely get to see 10,000 uh, a minority uh, black engineers all uh, in suit and tie. Uh, uh, it's a very, it's a, it's going to be probably their first experience at a career fair. Uh, it's going to be their uh, first experience possibly at a uh, collegiate fair. Uh, they'll go to a college fair and they'll get to talk to all the admissions and scholarship um, uh, program directors and 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 sometimes you even run to a vice provost and they'll uh, interview students right there on the spot. And they'll follow up with uh, scholarships and things like that at the national convention, and sometimes the fall region. Yeah. One of the things that we have uh, been able to do here at Alexandria Fairfax is increase our fundraising by having the NSB Union chapter. A lot of corporations they respond well to the NSB uh, mission and theme, and it helps us with our STEM funding, so we can uh, create uh, gather funds and travel and send students to these conferences. Uh, another thing is a lot of the corporate uh, scholarships are offered through NASB. So if you have graduating seniors, uh, our students have applied, and, uh, and, and we're looking forward to them being uh, NASB uh, scholarship recipients. Uh, so see, you can uh, talk more about the NASB STEM programs and some of the, uh, the things that uh, students will typically have to, uh, you know, register and things like that. Yes, um, our NSBE STEM programs, we provide access to national STEM programs where you're not only competing with NES, other NSBE chapters across the country, but you're also competing with um, different school chapters um, and school clubs all over the country. And so some of our competitions are Math Counts, TriMath or T-Mall. First Lego League, Vex Robotics, Kids Wins, our Nesby Junior Explorers, that's something that um, is for our child, our kids that are from th third through sixth grade, and the um, NASCAR 1080 Student Racing Challenge. And if you have the opportunity to talk to um, some of your um, kids when you go home and ask them about several of these initiatives, they will be able to tell you about First Lego League, Vex Robotics, 1080, Kit Wins. These are actually big things that only happen, that not only happen on a chapter level with us, but all over the country. So we're exposing them to um, national initiatives, and they're able to compete not only with us, but and do invitationals with other schools in the area. So just because you might be the only Nesby chapter in your area, it doesn't give you, it doesn't mean that you won't be able to compete with other students in your area. Um, it also teaches our students how to commit to something. As you can see, it's a time commitment of six to nine months. A lot of these um, things you have to uh, work in groups. Um, you have people who have to come up and do research and um, actually create things from um, nothing and create something. So it is wonderful to go and see these competitions. Um, the um, NSBE members come in with their t-shirts, they're doing their chants, they're really excited about their program because they did it themselves. It wasn't necessarily you know, the adult telling them what to do. It was them problem solving. So this is a great opportunity for you to be able to uh, really involve the students and give them the opportunity to um, problem solve and see something from its conception to its completion. Um, these are some of the costs of um, our first, our, excuse me, our um, initiative program pricing. Um, I find that a lot of, like, um, a lot of advisors that are uh, advisors of chapters like Marlon have 
very, very creative fundraising um, initiatives that they have. It's not just car washes and bake sales, but it's crafting very um, intelligent letters to owners of companies and um, things of that nature. And um, we do have a small fund that we're able to give and help out with the, um, the different programs. But um, especially, you know, this also gives them to say that we're committing this time and money. And so a lot of students look at that as a um, challenge to them also. All right. Um, to kind of react, uh, a typical uh, NSB uh, program or, or students that are in a, uh, going through a NSB curriculum or preparing uh, their school year, uh, their club, could um, possibly want to choose one or two events, and and you could send a letter to NSBE and, and see if there are um, resources or or um, equipment that they can uh, share with your chapter. Uh, uh, they'll be very happy to let you know if there's anything they can do for you to get you off to get you started off the ground to help subsidize the cost. Um, last year, uh, our our first year uh, doing uh, the Vex Robotics, we went to um, Anaheim, California to uh, compete in the Vex Robotics competition. It was the national competition. So uh, anyone, so the team that won the national, the NASB national Vex Robotics went on to the international uh, Vex Robotics competition. And as you know, Vex is in every state. So every state was in a team to represent them uh, at the international competition. I think last year was in Kentucky. Uh, the team, so NASB is considered like I guess a, it's just a separate reason. If you, if you don't, if you're not uh, a part of a Vex Robotics team locally and you uh, competed and won the national NSB, you would still be, uh, if, even if you're like from Texas or Virginia, uh, if you won the NSB, uh national competition, you would go on and represent, regardless of your state, you would compete in, a, in an international competition. Uh, we had a, uh, some opportunities. We have uh, some of my NSB junior members. Uh, be selected for a summer intern. Uh, we have the uh, we received a grant to uh, help us uh, secure the VEX robot. Uh, uh, the VEX robotics is one of the more expensive uh, programs. Uh, most robotics are uh, expensive, so we uh, were able to do that, and we were able to raise um, a lot of corporate money and internally through the uh, Alexander Fairfax alumni chapter um, to uh, help. Subsidize the cost of the students traveling to the national convention. So, uh, Cap Alpha Psi has 12 provinces. Uh, you can see them here. Um, and so, we're, uh, Alexander Fairfax is in Virginia, so we're a part of the Eastern Province. The Nesby regional map is showing you how Nesby uh, has a provision or a section of the country to. Um, facilitate their programs, and they have six regions, and uh, each region has its own fall regional conference, and in those fall regional conferences, uh, in the past, you, and it, it's not that they excluded it, but you, every year, you know, there's changes to the rules, and so you'll pull down the rule book, and you'll be in touch with your regional um, PCI, uh, uh, PCI chairperson for that region, so uh, that, that's typically a collegiate student, and they'll explain to you, you know, if you need to uh, uh, win or compete locally in a regional conference to go on to national. That may, you know, that, that changes from year to year. Um, and so, uh, so see, um, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on to the key event. Um, so you spoke about the fall regional conference, the national convention, and then there's another uh, program uh, for the summer called SEEK. A nasty summer engineering experience for kids. So yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, our summer engineering um, experience for kids is one of our premier programs. Um, it has been in existence for about ten years. Um, it we have several locations around the country. This year, I believe we have twelve locations um, that range from California all the way over to DC. Um, the uh, enrollment um, for each one is um, 
based on the time of the year that it happens. It usually happens in the summer from June until the end of July. It is a three-week STEM camp where they do several initiatives and several different projects throughout the week. Um, we don't have a high school um, camp this year, and we don't have – it goes from third until eighth grade. That is um, mainly all of the camps during this year because we are in a rebuilding year and this camp is basically convention spread over a three-week period where they learn different STEM activities. They also learn, have different math classes and um, they just learn all what all about the whole robust world of STEM. Um, to learn more information about that, you can go on our nesby.org website, and if you type in SEEK, you'll be able to find in that information about SEEK and um, what cities that we're in near your region. Okay. Um, uh, this, this is Tony, the moderator. Just a, a comment about SEEK. I know that just recently the registration went out, and I know that there were still some um, opportunities available throughout the country. I think I did see like Louisiana, but uh, how, how, those, how often do those, um, or how quickly do you need to register for those, um, those slots? Well, they fill up fast. Well, in the past, our, um, there has been no registration fee. So this year was the first year that it was a $50 registration fee. And even with that registration fee, it filled up, the slots filled up fast. So, um, it, our registration opens in January for SEEK, um, so my suggestion is as soon as registration opens to go on the website and just make sure that you um, get to secure your spot. And there was one question, the question was where are these events in, and, and, I, and I think that was before you started with SEEK, so if you could just give um, them an idea across the country different cities, different locations that, that have, um, you know, historical events. Oh, okay. With our fall regional conferences, if you go back to the map, um, there are six of them a year. Yes, the regional map. There are six of them a year, and um, each region has their own regional conference. Um, it's in a different city every year, a different city and state every year, and um, during that time, the uh, students, if if it is a competition year, um, it just like she said, it does depend on if our um, national PCI chair decides that this will be one of the years that they will have competitions during the FRCs. Um, but even though there's not competitions, they have scrimmages and invitationals where they're able to practice and also um, learn about STEM, and they have many um, career fairs and also many um, college fairs. The National Convention is the culmination of everything of what we've been doing the whole year, and that's, that travels regionally too. So, for, for example, last year, well, this year, past March, our um, National Convention was in Boston, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, which is Region 1, and next year it will be in Kansas City, which is Region 5. Um, Kansas City is a really good um, convention city. They're waiting and ready for us, and the city wants to embrace us, so I know that the PCI programming will be very, um, in t uh, very robust. And a lot of, and we also at our conferences have something that's called the Innovation Fair, where we have science fairs where people are able to compete there, and then also um, different organizations come and teach you more about STEM initiatives. So those are our big two things, which are the Fall Regional and National Convention, and then I just spoke about SEEK. Um, the SEEK. The SEEK site list usually comes out at the end of December, and then the, the enrollment starts at the beginning of January. Okay, that, that question, there's a couple questions coming in. Um, for um, another yeah. question by, by Ike Robinson. The question again was about SEEK and what cities they will be in. I was trying to see if I could, could pull it up. I know I will, um, if Mark, brother really can, there we go, he's going to pull it up on the screen so he can see that, those cities. 
Um, and the question by Anthony Taylor is that he didn't see Virginia in a region. I think that map, for whatever reason, did not list Virginia. But um, Virginia is, as you did say, is in, in Region 2. Yes. Region 2 is Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, West Virginia, District of Columbia, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Yeah, and if you click on the 2016 dates and locations, that will tell you all of our locations. Um, but yes, but so far, um, these dates and locations are correct. And then uh, um, if you go on the tabs, you'll see registration and general information. And um, it's a lot more interactive um, with the registration being open. So definitely, if you're in that city or near that city that um, you're interested in, I would click there and explore it a little bit more to see if we have openings in your area. Okay, and while you're scrolling through there, the question by James Moore, will all the written presentations of this webinar be available to print? The answer to that is yes, that the PowerPoint is available. Um, there was a document that they were bringing up that was the, the PCI, the Free College Initiative rule book, and I think I was told that the, the, one, the version that's available out there right now was 2015-2016, so in August, the um, Assuming in August, the 2016-2017 um, will be available. So we'll, we'll make sure that all that information gets out, and that will have all of your dates for the upcoming um, conferences and events for 2016-2017. Is that a good answer, Cecilia? Yes, that is. <laughs> all right. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm going to go back to the uh, PowerPoint. Um, well, before I go back to the pop, yeah, I go back to the PowerPoint, and um, back to the uh, the NSBE program. So, with the um, for for those uh, that want to know more about the program, if you go on the NSBE.org website, please go to uh, NSBE Junior. And or programs uh, under the tabs. I guess I can just go to the website. I'd be better. Um, on the website, we would go to um, NSB dot org, NSBE dot org, and uh, to uh, get the, the program information, more information. I guess we would go to uh, membership, NSB Junior. Free college, and here under this link, you can learn more about Nesby Junior in detail, um, annual dues, membership term, which is August 1st through July 31st, and uh, and how to join Nesby Junior. There's a link for that as well. Um, and so and, here's, uh, Oh, Please. I was also going to say, if you have multiple ch children in your household, keep in mind that each student has to have their own individual email address. That's how you, that is the, the, treated as their login and then their password. So just keep that in mind also. Okay, we have one more question uh, from Michelle Wells. 
and she says her daughter is a Nesby Junior member at large. How could she become more involved in Nesby Junior activities? She's with the chapter in her middle school, but now she's attending a Catholic high school. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, one way that she can become more involved is um, if she is at the moment where she would like to start a chapter at her, at her school, that could definitely be an option. Um, also, I know that our programs team is coming out with more um, more initiatives to engage our at-large members um, with, you know, virtual programming and things of that nature um, to get the magazine also to come to national convention. Uh, but one of the main things would be um, to maybe start a chapter and we would definitely help with that. I know that that's a very big fee, but um, you know, unfortunately, with our at-large at membership, we would like to have a lot more um, programming, and that's <clears throat> something that they definitely want to do this year, um, just so that the at-large members will have more opportunities to be more engaged. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, um, I like to I like to I like to add something to that. Um, also, we um, if you can uh, see if the alumni chapter, the uh, Nesby alumni chapter, uh, has activities for the uh, PCI students, and the uh, collegiate has uh, programming for uh, your PCI student in your city. A lot of times they do. If you get on their listserv, they may have activities. Or hosting the Nesby Junior chapter uh, that your students can join, they may not be uh, that you may not be aware of uh, nearby. So, so while uh, this is this is Tony, while they're um, continuing through this presentation, I know there will be questions on on what we're doing with 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 Cap Alpha Psi and and how we're trying to incorporate students across the country and I think with Cecilia mentioned um, one advantage with the new initiatives that are coming out with virtual programming we're looking at these um, um, for the, those chapters that have the wherewithal to, to kind of manage their own chapter um, you know we'll, we'll be working together with those those particular chapters but we're looking at taking a regional approach so that each region will have a Kappa team so that'll take a little bit of the pressure off of some of the individual chapters um, coming together as a as a region. Now, for example, if we'll, we'll, we'll use Region Two, since that was mentioned earlier, where you've got um, that Region Two will cross more than one province. So, and when we when we get a little bit more down into the details, we'll kind of make it make sense as far as um, somebody from the Eastern Province and then another chapter that may be in the uh, the Middle Eastern province, how we kind of intersect. And so those were the things that we're going to be working on, particularly now and between now and August. And also um, we've begin, begun to talk to some of the universities, you know, for example, with the Eastern province, there, there's, there's five regions. So we want to make sure we have at least one university with a Nesby junior, with a Nesby chapter that we can kind of fall on. And just I was speaking to one of the the, the chapter advisors at one of the universities um, today, and one of the things they were excited about is some of the challenges that they have is they'll have um, like an elementary school, and it could be elementary school, it could be a high school, and um, sometimes the continuity where they may have a person, they may move on to another school, and um, you kind of you know no different than what we experience in Kappa. We've got these great uh, mentors that may. Um, the difference when you're dealing with school, sometimes they'll leave the school, go to another school district. Um, one advantage we'll have with Kappa is that we will, we may have brothers that move, but they don't leave the fraternity. So when they move from, from Washington, D.C. area to maybe to North Carolina or Texas, they're still involved with the fraternity, and so we'll keep that continuity. So we're going to look out for that as we continue to um, develop this program.
All right, Marlon, I see you've got the Nesby Connect um, slide up. I do, I do, and um, I believe I believe that uh, covers a lot of the information about the Nesby Junior program and, and how you can get in contact and join Nesby Junior. And one of the other things is, you know, uh, look, if, you, if your student is already a guy right student, uh, uh, by the fall, you should uh, see more information coming out about how you can um, get involved with Nesby through your uh, guy right advisor. Let's see, do you have anything to add? Um, um, no, I don't. I, I really thank Marlon for bringing Kappa Alpha Psi to NSBE. Um, this is definitely one of the ways to get our mission out and the initiative out. Um, I look forward to working with you all to have a creative way to get your students accounted for and um, taking a regional approach I feel like is a great idea um, versus starting on a small level um, because sometimes what I find is smaller chapters it may be a, a super mom or a tiger mom or a super dad there and they're like yes we're all gone we're all gun ho for it but as soon as their child graduates like you said or maybe they move to a different area that chapter kind of falls but if we're looking at it from a regional standpoint, it's great because that area will all, always be supported because they have champions who are on a regional level to kind of check on them and make sure that they're doing okay and give the support that they need, not just from a Desby standpoint, but from a Kappa standpoint. So I really, really am excited about the way that you all are approaching this. Um, this can also be a pilot for how other organizations work with us, and then also how other um, chapters work with us. So I look definitely look forward to working with you all. Uh, well, Tony, that's all I have this evening. I'll uh, if you show the contact information uh, for uh, Nancy. Uh, Ms. This is Cecilia Pig can be reached at uh, the uh, National Society of Black Engineers World Headquarters, uh, membership at NSA.org. Um, feel free to contact Marlon Ridley. Uh, if you have any questions about NSA Junior uh, in terms of uh, sign up or, or programs or how they engage uh, with this tip, uh, if, if you have any questions just about uh, NSA Junior, uh, how we do things in Alexander Perfect Junior Chapter, or just to learn about other NSB Junior chapters in the area, you can contact me at AFNSBEJR, AFNSB Junior at gmail.com. And you have my information there. Um, a lot of the activities that we're doing and promoting were out there on, on Facebook. We have a number of um, Facebook uh, pages through the National Guide, right? The National Capital League website being redesigned. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is just the fourth uh, webinar in the series of a Diamonds in the Rough program. There will be another webinar um, next week. Um, what we have going on with the National STEM Committee, we have a, um, another webinar scheduled for May, and that's um, working with some of the Microsoft initiatives, and then in June with code.org. So we'll get that information out to you. Look forward to um, to growing the program. Um, I would like to thank the um, again. I would li like to thank the Kellogg Foundation, the Kappa Psi Foundation, for um, for their support in, in putting these um, initiatives together and, and, and creating funding and working with our activities like um, Naviance and um, these other um, webinars that you may have already seen. Um, Again, I'd like to thank Cecilia Pitts and her National Society of Black Engineers um, team here at the, um, the World Headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia. Marlon Ridley, um, who's been doing yeoman's work with, um, with STEM and, and, and getting this opportunity out in front of as many students as we can. Um, STEM Team Committee Chair Dean Jones over in Texas, and um, Wilder Smith also here in, um, in Alexandria, who is the Godright Chair of the Alexander Fairfax Alumni Chapter, 
and a partner, Ben Jackson, who probably just took control of the screen and put up the upcoming webinars. And we look forward to presenting webinars um, to you very soon. And I'd like to thank everybody who was on our call this evening. Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you.